I think Umar should get a title shot after the winner of Marab and uh, O'Malley. So basically, he's going to be fighting Marab. So it'd be the white papaka versus the black papaka. And I think that'd be a fun ass fight. So watch your grill, yoga, knock that cold fast and talk. Now we talking facts. Where the man are off the back. You in trouble, came to burst your bubble. I don't shelter punches. They find home on your mind about a devil. It's the weekly scraps. You don't need a map. GPS, I'm right here to lead a death. The world doesn't know it needs, but I grow disease. Planet, fuck a name and the fame. Only legacy remains. Remember the name, Al Jermaine Sterling. It ain't it ain't mother. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the weekly scraps. You see Abu Dhabi is in the books, and we have some definitive answers now. Umar Namagamedov is a really good fighter. I think we all already knew that, but now we got some clarity on this with him fighting a top-ranked contender and showing that he is the next guy in line to fight for a world title. And I'm glad the UFC is getting back to the merit side of things. Umar earned his shot beating the number two ranked guy and he's not going to get bumped out of place by someone who's ranked let's say sixth or seventh to fight for a world title and have to wait behind that guy. I think we all know where I'm going with this. Merit needs to come back to the sport. With that said, Umar has earned it and a very impressive uh, performance in my personal opinion. I thought it was a big battle of the minds. Corey Sanhagen comes out hot. He wins round one in my book. It was a close round, but I thought for me, the leg kicks, the combinations, I thought defending the takedowns where even where Umar got the takedown, he did nothing with it. And as we call that now, it's just a change of position where there's no damage actually done. So it doesn't score in the sense of uh, something that hurts your opponent, just a position change. It's as if you were pressed against the cage and then you defended and got off the cage. That's kind of the way that I have interpreted that rule, so to speak. So I thought Corey had a really good round one, but then for some reason, it just looked like his output slowed and Umar's output just, just did a little bit more than he was doing. Umar was throwing combinations, Corey wasn't. It kind of looked like he was slowing down or trying to prevent himself from slowing down in those later rounds. I don't know if he was getting flashbacks from his fight with Jan when he fought in Abu Dhabi and he got tired in those later rounds. And it was the same thing. He won round one and then rounds two, three, four, and five, he kind of just let whatever happen and the other guy just started to take over. But I will say I was very impressed with Corey Sanhagen's defense. Every time he was taken down or gave up his back, he was able to roll, Granby roll out of it or get to his feet, defend the hooks, fight the hands. Classic 101 defense for guys who are getting their backs taken or have the hooks in. He did his homework. And it was nice to see that people can properly prepare even if they are not a pri primarily a grappling type of fighter. All it takes is proper preparation and some due diligence to get the work done. And he did just that. So I hope a lot of people take inspiration from all weight classes. When someone gets behind you, defend. Don't just sit there and look. It's very odd when I see people do that. And I think there was another fight earlier that night where the guy was on his back and he just did not know what to do with his hands. Just did not know. His hands just kept going and he just did not know what to do with his hands. It's, it's actually hilarious to watch people like that because I'm just like, dude, you are in the gym. You're telling me you do no jujitsu. You mean to tell me no one has ever gotten your back in jujitsu? And you don't think there's probably this opponent that you might fight where you're like, you know, maybe I should work on this because my opponent is good here. Nah, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to just keep hitting the pads. No. So, again, great stuff from Corey Sanhagen and really good stuff from Umar Namagamedov. Um, there's any other things that felt he did good, like some of the kicks. It, it's just always impressive to me how he had such great timing on those takedowns. For me, I was thinking that he was gonna be able to get more control, but every time he advanced to the back trying to get the hooks in, Sanhagen did a good job of getting his hips higher than Umar's, where he was almost like sitting on his chest pulling the, f the foot to his chest, which takes away the 
takes away the versatility and the use Of that hook. <laughs> Bruh, it's early. I smoked some, some Ching Ching Chong last night, and I am feeling the after effects of being high. So forgive me. But uh, I am well rested, kind of. But not really. It's like my body went through this realization that you are really tired, and you should probably sleep a little bit longer. But I said, no, the people need this. The people need this, so I got you. Coffee? I don't drink coffee. Do not drink coffee. Um, again, Corey did some really good stuff. Umar did some really good stuff. I like the kicks that he was using, the front kicks that he always uses. I call it like the Inspector Gadget kick or Dow Zim kick because he's here one second, he's standing, and then he just shoots these long limbs that aren't very long, but they seem to just extend and get extra range on it whenever he does utilize those kicks. Those back kicks, front kicks, question mark kicks. I was shocked with Corey not trying any type of jumping attack, no real spinning wheel kicks, like nothing. He's not a crazy power puncher, but he didn't go to the liver. Damn. What is this, amateur hour? <laughs> what do you call it? Amateur hour. Oh. <laughs> Corey didn't go to the liver at all, which is one of his patented moves the liver shot that he, he sets up. Um, he didn't go for any of his flying knee attacks. And he didn't really use any push kicks in those later rounds himself, which was, I don't know. It's just, if you look at the demeanor, he came out focused and then just looked like he had this look of worry in his face as if the grappling was taking more out of him than maybe we, maybe than he expected or something. But again, I think he showed a few things um, I think now people looking at that Umar fight where it's tough, but it's not so much of the end of the world where he takes you down. The 135 pound division, I think a lot of people need to realize, is not like 155. When Khabib was dominating at 155, there were primarily no high level grapplers who can wrestle and do jujitsu. There's a lot more guys at 150, 135 that can do that in comparison to Khabib, when he was dominating. When he was dominating, he beat the best guys that they put in front of him. But let's be honest, a lot of those guys did not have that well-rounded skill set like the guys at 135. And I'm not saying Khabib's not good. I'm comparing the skill sets of the opponents that he faced. So now you're looking at guys that Umar is facing. There's guys that are a lot more talented and, not, and guys that who won't put themselves in position where they will get finished every single time or dominated in those positions. And I think we're starting to see that and understand that. And when you understand that, it helps you better prepare either at 155 or at 135 because you know what you have in front of you, you know what you can do, and you, you have the recipe for success. You just got to go out there, put it to, to work in the, in the room, and then hopefully in the octagon, it shows. And Corey was able to do that and show that if you do proper homework, you can make this a very competitive fight because if he takes you down, and people believe in the aura or the myth of this, the, the, the Mega Medovs are just untouchable and they're not human, you already lost before you even stepped in there. So I, I think those are a couple of things that were answered. And again, it did show that Umar is that good. But I still think he's, like that performance alone, I think... Um, it would be a tough fight for him to fight Marab or an O'Malley if that's the Umar that shows up. And of course, he's got time to get better. That's his first highest ranked opponent that he faced. So you got to cut him some slack there. I didn't expect him to come out there and just destroy Corey because Corey is good. I even said it before the fight. I said Corey seems to have this confidence about him that he knows what he's looking to get into and he will be more than ready. And I think he's going to shock the world. And I think he did shock a lot of people. Because <clears throat> I think people still look at my fight with his, even though that was in 2020. People still think if you're a high-level grappler, you could just go out there and grab Corey, throw him down. And Umar has really good grappling. I know. Because I've seen it in the room, and I've got to even just feel his strength even playing around in some of the positions and meeting him in person. So with that said, I know when he grabbed Corey, for Corey to have gotten out means Corey was well prepared. That's why I'm going to leave it at, because I don't want people to think I'm discrediting Umar, because Umar's really good. And I also want people to give 
Corey his flowers for showing that he's also really good. He's neck and neck right there with those guys. And it almost feels like he chokes in the big moments, the interim title with Jan, even though that was short notice. And now this one, I feel like there was the same similar pattern. Win one round, round one, and then rounds two through five, <clears throat> slowly but surely get tired and just not do as good as we thought he was going to do. Um, like close rounds, but he clearly dropped the rounds where you're like, ah, eh, that was close, but definitely you know who was winning. Umar, you knew who was winning, Jan. So that's my take on that. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen next until they have some definitive answers with the spear. I would imagine that Figgy, Figueredo, is probably going to be fighting somebody else in the interim. Because I, I do think, if anything, maybe he fights Umar. That could be the fight right there. I just thought about that. <clears throat> Umar versus Davidson Figueredo, a guy who can grapple. The only thing is he gets tired, and I think his grappling defense isn't as good as a guy like Corey Sanhagen. So I will say, if I'm giving an early prediction on that, I would say if Umar takes Davison down, then Davison's in big trouble. Uh, we saw Brennan. Moreno was able to choke him out. I could see something very similar happen, happening to Figgy from Umar. So I, I think that's the best... That's the worst case scenario for Figgy in that position. But I do think that's a fun fight for them to make if they're going to have a long layover or a layoff. Layovers for planes. If they're going to have a long layoff, then um, I think Umar versus Davidson figured that it would be a fun fight to make. <clears throat> uh, honestly, guys, I don't really, there's not many of the other fights that I really want to talk about. Um, Shada Buddha is really good. I thought he had a really good fight with Ola J. Shook. Other than that, uh, there Did was some... Did you MMA gurus with him? No. He was basically like, you guys, the, the, the Shada... He has one eye, and well, he's winning. Well, he he's was pretty sick. like, you guys, like, Bo Nickel, like, what, he was, <clears> like, his last fight, he dominated the other guy, but it just took him a little bit longer to get it done. Okay. And, and you guys wrote Bo Nickel off and said he's washed and he's, he's overrated. But this guy goes, goes three rounds with all the with on short notice, and you guys are like slobbing on his dick, like fucking. There's no tomorrow. Yeah, I didn't think like, that fight like, was very impressive, if I'm being honest. There's like a cultural problem. No, there's there's a big cultural problem. I think there's a lot of, um, and I don't know what their religion is, but it comes off that a lot of them are Islamic, of a, of a, uh, Islamic faith, but some of those fans are so. Toxic. It is bizarre to me how toxic. Like we, we, us in America, we take things as a joke. Like we laugh about things. We break balls. Like we can watch the fights and just okay, whatever. It could be our favorite fighter, and then we could be talking shit about them. Where no matter what, it's like they're so gun ho serious about everything. I'm like, dude, sometimes you guys gotta relax, decompress a little bit, laugh. Ha ha. That was a funny. You were supposed to laugh at that one. Oops, over your head. My bad. <laughs> like, that's how they make me feel sometimes. I'm, I'm like, reading these comments, for you to be praising Shada the way you're praising him, and then shitting on Bo Nickel in the same breath in a similar performance, but one was an actual finish and dominated before, like, much sooner, versus a back and forth fight that was like, and still thinking like this guy is the next cent thing from like, Pretending almost as if he was Hamzat Chemaev coming back all over again. It's not. It's not Hamzat. Shadow Bullet is good. He's fun to watch. Let's leave it at that. Let's stop the crazy pushing of him saying like he's like the next greatest thing. He's great, but relax a little bit. He's good, but if he runs into a guy like Bo Nickel, I think we all know what's going to happen. Um, and that's not trying to be biased. That's not trying to be... I don't even know. People think I don't like Muslims. I like the Muslims. I got Muslim friends. I mean, you just said Umar should get a title shot. I think Umar should get a title shot after the winner of Marab and uh, O'Malley. So basically, he's going to be fighting Marab. <clears throat> so it'd be the white papaka versus the black papaka. And I think that'd be a fun ass fight. Two high level grapplers. One's a pretty good striker. Um, but going back to Shot of Bullet, like, there was a good fight. 
But there was a lot of things I feel like he did sloppily or could do better. And I think that just shows that it's early in his career. He needs time to grow. So before you guys write me off to say, oh, you just hate it. As Muslims are all over again. Listen to what I'm saying. He is very good. He just needs time to grow. When you get into the UFC in your early careers, you need stepping stone fights. Let him get the stepping stone fights. Ola Jacek, I think, was tougher than he expected. And I don't think that was a stepping stone highlight reel fight that he should have gotten. But it was short notice. He needed someone so that he could stay on the card. And you guys should be happy. Be thankful that Ola Jacek stepped up, pushed him to the limits, because I think that's only going to help Shot a Bullet grow from here. That's it. So I think that's a reasonable, fair, sensible takeaway. And I think people need to slow down on this Hamza Chemaev trajectory so early in his career. The guy has one eye. He's fighting brilliant for being at a disadvantage. Um, he's physically gifted outside of that one thing that's a disadvantage. Uh, this sounds weird to even say that, but the guy's good. He just needs a little bit more time to develop, and we'll see how far he can really go. Um, other than that, <clears throat> there was another, I feel like there was another fun fight that I can't really remember on that card. Do you have the fight card in front of you? Yeah. That was another good one. I just can't. Was it a Jake Hybert? I don't know. That was another good fight. But uh, we will say this. We got our guy Pombos Gregorio fighting this weekend in Vegas at the Apex. Uh, that's going to be a fun fight. Check that out. It's going to be his second fight in the UFC. He dropped, obviously, his UFC debut. He's looking to bounce back. Uh, the last one was a decision, close fight. And I... Got to see some of the work he was putting in, and I think he's more than prepared to go out there and get a finish and get his first UFC win. Uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson. Uh, we're not talking about Tony Ferguson. <clears throat> Respectfully. Respectfully, my man needs to chill. Um, my man did a half, half retirement. No one does a half retirement. Tony Ferguson is the type, type of guy to half retire. Like, he's, he's that guy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before. Um, so we got Pombos coming up this weekend, and then in two weeks after that, we have Dennis Bazookia fighting, and then we have Marab fighting at the Spear, and then your boy is going to pull up in Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City, want to get that, uh, uh, I was going to rap something, but it's going to be a little, uh, that's it, that's all I got, <laughs> that's all I got. Um, Funk Harbor dot. FunkHarborRum.shop. Go check it out. And we have Nerd Focus. Thank you guys for always supporting the podcast. NerdFocus.com. Also on Amazon.com. So again, got some big fights coming up. I will be back in Vegas this week. Today is my last day in Long Island. I'm going so sad to be leaving. So if you guys want to see me, it would have to be now because I'm about to go to the gym. Other than that, it's not, I'm not training tonight. I'm training this morning, get my work in, pack up the rest of my clothes, and then uh, I'll be back in Vegas in the heat, ready to go. Got some good training partners that were recruiting for this. Don't want to give away too much of the secret sauce. You guys will have to stay tuned to watch the vlogs that will be coming back. Um, again, we won't be in stores just yet, but if you guys... Would like to support Funk Harbor, go to the website, funkharborrum.shop. Thank you guys for all the purchases thus far. You guys have been truly an amazing blessing um, to the start of this launch, and I look forward to a very successful and interesting journey along the way. Bumps and bruises, and we'll see how far we can go. Take this thing. We'll have the white rum, which will be a lot cheaper. The price point should be about 20, 25 bucks um, for the white rum. Coming by Christmas, we're getting a couple of details sorted, the logistical stuff of, of uh, things, and we'll go from there. Other than that, thank you guys. Be safe. Big fights this week.